for I didn't know, I know you wanted to punch me in the head. Yeah, it's like <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I don't hold the grudge. <laughs> Let's go to 139. It's good to be safe. kids uh but then after it was over you know you start to wind down you're just like oh and i'm like now i gotta put out two messages <laughs> <laughs> and uh so i had to sit down and i studied basically all night got to bed and then uh then the, i don't know that every time i'm tired i think the dogs know it and they jump on the bed and want to go to the bathroom late at, at during the night and i got it was up early in the morning couldn't get back to sleep sat there and then you know Got down on my knees and prayed a lot. Yeah, but uh, we had a good time. It was a good time. It was a real good time. Uh, um, that was just, uh, you know, when everybody's penned up and uh, it's like a horse race. The horses are in the stalls and ready to go. And that guy, boom, hits the thing. And man, the horses come running out. That was what it was like on Friday nights. 
that was the first meeting in such a long time, and I'm glad we were the first ones in the gate. And uh, um, uh, what was really good is um, to be the example. You know, Amen. to be the example. And you say, well, what example? Uh, we never close. Everybody else had closed. We did not close the whole time. And to see that, hey, somebody's going to stand up, you know. And, and, and the, the, this county was really tough on anybody that was open. But God protected us. God protected us. Amen. So here we are in Hosea. It's chapter 4 today. Uh, now, Hosea starts out. He's, look, look uh, you got to think about this. This guy was uh, told to marry uh, a Marry a woman of whoredoms, a woman of adulteries. Uh, how many? How many of you would be single? Go out and find. That's what I want. That's what I want. I want to. I want to go find a woman who's going to cheat on me. <coughs> you know, uh, it, it's a little. It, you know, you think it's a little bit cuckoo. What kind of, how, how did it? How did it work out? How did God talk to him like that? You know, uh, but it's recorded as a history. People think these are not stories, people. That's how they take them. Uh, I want you to know that's what they do with this Bible. You know, I, um, I, was, I was speaking to uh, a few people that went to uh, Bible college. In fact, one of them was here. Um, and don't take this. This is a different, different school. But, <laughs> but um, he had went to school, and what they taught him to do was to not trust his Bible. Well, they're all versions. All the versions of the Bible, they're all, they're all Bibles. That's what they had told him. And he lost his confidence in the Bible because they were always correcting it. Well, God didn't really say that. He really said this. And then you say, why? Well, did you ever think about this? Then it becomes the point of Genesis is just a story. It becomes just a story. So if I can't believe one story, why should I believe another? And then they wonder why their kids don't get saved. Because, you know, Jesus Christ, it's just a story. Everything becomes just a story. Uh, it's not, it's historical. Everything in the Bible is historical. Uh, they just won't admit it. Uh, they, they, I don't know if you've ever noticed that in history they change the names of all the kings. How do they, what do you mean they, they do? Why? Because that is to show that the Bible isn't right, I guess. But then it clears up Babylon when they reigned in Assyria and then the Babylon they went right to the Bible and found out how they, how it was rain, how the rain was, and, and who was in there. It, 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 they use it, and then they turn around, and after it, they get what they want out of it. Then they turn around and turn against it to get you not to believe what God already said. Mm -hmm. Amen. So uh, here's Jose. Marries a woman of heart, a whoredom. She goes and uh, he has a child with her, named uh, whose name was Jezreel, and uh, he is his child. But the other two were not his ch children. And that's a, a picture of uh, how the Lord is. That, those, that one is my child that's down in uh, Judah. The other, they're not my children. They're not my children. And, um, and Hosea has to, this is the part he has to deal with to understand how God's feeling about Israel. Now, he, uh, in chapter 3, was a look at how uh, things are uh, that they're dealing with in their lifestyle and how the future is going to be for them. They were without a king, without a prince, without a sacrifice, without an image. That's verse number four in the last chapter. Uh, without an ephod and without a teraphim, what's happening? God ain't kidding around. So now uh, Hosea is going to preach. It's time to preach. And the Bible says in chapter four, it says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery. They break out and blood toucheth of blood. Therefore shall the land mourn and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of uh, heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away, uh, yet 
let no man strive, nor reprove another. For thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy uh, thy mother. Father, bless thy word this morning. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, the, it's time to preach, and he says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Uh, Israel has a time right now. Look, um, when things are going good, when things are going good, how, how many people do you think uh, think of the Lord? I mean, i got to say it, you know, and, and um, it's a sad thing to say, uh, but it is happening. I, I don't have a problem with any political affiliation, what guy you like or whatever. You can hang signs out your door. But here's the thing. You're trusting in no politician. And Trump's, Trump could be trying to do his best, but let me tell you something. He's not our savior. Okay? And, uh, and no matter at his best and whatever he can do, he's going to be messed up. Why? Well, God's not building a government, people. He may use it, but he's not building it. And um, at this time in their history, you know what's happening? They are prosperous. Now, how many people uh, seek the Lord to learn prosperity? You know, remember what we've learned uh, there's mountain experiences, there's valley experience, but where's, where's all the grass? It's in the valley. Where's all the growth? It's in the valley. What's up on top of the mountain? Snow and not, absolutely nothing else. Okay? So God uses the valleys. And uh, hear the word of the Lord. It's time to preach. And he says, the Lord hath a controversy. <laughs> the Lord has a controversy. Let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter 17. The Lord has a controversy. He comes out, he makes sure. What's the point of this? He has a controversy. Who with? Jose? Jose has it? No, the Lord has it. You realize that's how the Lord talks to the church sometimes? What's that? The Lord has a controversy. You, you come, sometimes you come into church thinking, oh, I see that chapter. It's going to be a beautiful chapter. And all of a sudden, the Lord lets loose on you. Why? You've got a controversy with you. You know, uh, you and you and I, Lord, can sometimes. You ever have that point where God turns around and says, "You and I, you know, we're not thinking alike." Right. We're not. You're you're not on my side. I'm trying to get you on my side. Okay. Uh, chapter 17. Look at look down at verse number uh, eight. He says, "And and there, uh, if there arise a matter too hard uh, for thee in judgment between blood and blood, uh, between plea and plea." Uh, between stroke and stroke, being matters of what? Controversy. When? Within the gates, your own people. Then shalt thou arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. you got a controversy. Uh, God's got a controversy with you. Uh, guess what? Uh, he doesn't need to come to you. You need to go to him. Right? Uh, God ain't the problem. Who is? Yeah. I'm the problem. I'm the problem. Okay, God is not the problem. You are the problem. Now, I'm going to tell you how I looked at this chapter and how I looked at that controversy. Um, I, I would assume that um, somebody like Hosea there, right there, is having uh, people point fingers at him. Look at his lifestyle. Think of you and look at his lifestyle. You don't think anybody's pointing his finger. Hey, hey look at dummy uh, Hosea. He has that woman. She's been she running around on him. A guy ain't even smart enough to keep his own woman. You don't think that he's got fingers pointing at him? You know what's happening right now? It's time to preach. Hosea's got to turn it around. He's got to start pointing the finger at them. How do you, with his testimony, it's not going to be easy. This guy's going to have a hard time. But God turns around and he says, go out and preach to these people. And Hosea's going to go out and say, listen up. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. And he's going to, he's going to have a controversy with Israel here. And uh, he's going to point the finger right at him. And he says, with the inhabitants, verse number one, with the inhabitants of the land, why do I have this controversy? Because there is no truth. They ain't got the right Bible. There, there's no truth in this. He says, uh, what's that? There's no mercy. Uh, there, when there's, there's no mercy in the land. Look, did you notice he said no mercy? He didn't say law. He didn't say no law. He said there's no mercy. 
Okay? Like we are today. What's that? We don't have any mercy. We don't we see around. I'm not talking about you in the room. We have we have really the wrong mercies. I mean, you know what we have? We have a, we have SPCA mercies. They put on dogs on the television and they make a sad song in between the dogs shivering and everything like that. Oh let me ask you something. How much are they making off of that? Right. You know where your money's going? <clears throat> you really think they care about those dogs? I mean, you realize that Planned Parenthood used to have, uh, uh, they used to have commercials too where you show children and everything else and, and, and show uh, people, oh, they're also, and then they know what they do now. They say, well, you know, if you get rid of it, they're, you're getting rid of women's health care. They've given women health care. Whether They've never given woman a woman health care. They don't even get prenatal and they say they do. You know what, they're just an abortion center. You know what they are? They're a killing machine. That's all they are. You don't care about innocent people. You don't care about innocent people either. You've got no mercy. And just so you know, I was talking to I was talking to Dr. Caesar just last week about it. One of the things he just told me was that Planned Parenthood has had a problem with the doctors, so now they're hiring uh, non-medical people to actually uh, perform the uh, destruction of the child because the they feel the doctors can't go against their ethics because the doctors have been some of the doctors have been refusing so now they bring in another person it's not even a medical personnel they're bringing in to do it here push the button here push that kind of getting sick isn't it I bet you sooner or later we'll probably have it where I mean why don't we have executioners at the uh, at the at the jails at the prisons you know uh, why don't we have a system where you can volunteer. See, that's too hard, but they can do that for, for a child. It gets gross, people. No mercy. Now watch. The next part, it says, nor a knowledge of God uh, in the land. Now you say, well, I, I know my friends with knowledge of God, you know, but they don't have the right book. They have knowledge of God. Did you ever get intense with them? Did you ever get into a good conversation and how much knowledge do they really have without the right book? Do they really know God without the right? I don't think they do. I don't think they do. But there, he says there's no knowledge of God in the land. I bet you they had uh, meeting places. I, I bet you they had uh, parts of the, the law. That ain't the problem. The problem is that people don't want to hear it in the land. So they have no knowledge. He, he says in verse number two, by swearing and lying and killing and stealing, and committing adultery, they break out. And what happens? Blood toucheth blood. Uh, you've got a rampant sin going on. Rampant sin is just all encompassing the place. The Bible says, therefore, now God says, therefore shall the land mourn. And every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Uh, you're going to see a dearth, he says. You're going to see a famine and a dearth uh, uh, when these things are taken away. Go to Jeremiah chapter uh, 14. Lord says in chapter 14, the word of the Lord uh, that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth. And Judah mourneth, the gates thereof languish. Uh, they are black unto the ground and cry. The cry of Jerusalem is gone up. And their nobles have sent their little ones and to the waters. Uh, they came to the pits and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. Uh, they were ashamed and confused and covered their heads. Why? Because the ground is checked. For there was no rain in the earth. The plowmen were ashamed. Uh, they covered their heads. Uh, dearth causes a problem. Look, you don't look for uh, the dearth in the uh, substances. It's the dearth today and the famine of the Word of God. Okay? It's not that there isn't the Word of God. It's the hearing of it. They don't go to hear it. They don't want to hear it. Okay, uh, there's a famine in the land. 
uh, today, and that's the famine. And um, the famine is there's no word of God. You can find it. They just don't want to go for it. They don't want to hear it today. And they're broken. They're naked today. Uh, going back to uh, Hosea chapter uh, 4, look at verse number 4. He says, Yet let no man, yet don't allow a man to strive nor reprove another. Why? For thy people are as they that strive. Now watch, with, a, with the priest. You're not supposed to strive uh, with the priest. Uh, but here's the problem. It'll say, watch, therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy uh, thy mother. Okay, uh, you've got two uh, elements there of two people uh, two titles. You got one is the priest, and then all of a sudden you got the prophet. Now, uh, I want you to understand something. The priest is supposed to be an objective person. He's an intercessor. Uh, the priest. Uh, the reason why when they they're not supposed to get emotional. You remember when Caiaphas rent his clothes emotionally to show he's distraught for the blasphemy that he he had claimed. Uh, you realize that what did the Bible was say? Was he allowed to uh, rent his clothes? It, no. No, you're supposed to be objective, okay? You're supposed to be an intercessor. That means that if, uh, if whether he's having a bad day, whether he's having a good day, uh, if somebody brings the right sacrifice, uh, he's supposed to perform. Whether he likes it or not, he's supposed to perform. He's not to be uh, have a side other than being on the Lord's side. But here's the prophet. Look at the thing it said in verse number 5. Therefore, therefore, you strive with the priest, therefore, what happens is the, the prophet, he's the preacher, shall also fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. You know what's happening right now is that the prophets are uh, tickling the people's ears. They're tickling the people's ears at this time. Do you ever have preachers that tickle people's ears? You ever been in there? They just, they're, hey, look, it's like this. Um, uh, I don't, I, you probably know him, uh, but there's a well-known evangelist out there who wants to help everybody. He's got something called Saddleback Ranch or something like that or whatever. His name is uh, Rick Warren, okay? I don't like to use names all the time, but uh, he's a scoundrel. So it's not a problem. Mark then called the cause the visions. And uh, this man, what he did was say that you want a successful church, what the best way to do is to go around and uh, ask the people what they would like to hear. Ask the people and find out what they want. Okay? Uh, that will help your church. Yes, you'll, if I was to go around and ask the people what they want and gave the people what they want, you can get a crowded room. But it's going to be a church attainment and a mess. Amen. Uh, tickling of the ears is doing that, is, is going and not preaching God's word. Look, um, the best thing you can do, I always say, is expository preaching like we're doing. And the reason why is because I can't pick on anybody. It's just explaining scripture. Okay, I may put you into this. I may put you into the sermon, but I'm not looking you thinking you're doing these things. I'm just putting you in, you know. Uh, to make it, to make it, you know, uh, appealing sometimes. But these guys are tickling your ears. What do they do? They're going to tell you what you want to hear to bring you back next week or to be successful. Okay, uh, it's not good for you. It's not good for you. Uh, go, go over to uh, Micah chapter three. Micah chapter 3. Look, at, look down at verse number 5. It starts out. He says, Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets. He's going to talk to the preachers here. And he says that make my people to what? Err. Prophets that make my people to err. The bite with their teeth and cry. The bite with their teeth and cry. Uh, peace and he that putteth not into their mouths uh, they even prepare war against him therefore night shall be unto you 
that ye shall not have a vision. Now think about that. You shall not have a, without a vision, what happens? It says in the Bible, the people perish. Proverbs, what's that? Proverbs 24, 20 verse 4. He says, and it shall be dark unto you, and ye shall not divine, and the sun shall go down over the prophets. He has no light coming out of them. And the day shall be dark over them. Then shall the seers be ashamed. They're the same as the prophets, the seers. He says, then the seers shall be ashamed. And the diviners confound it. Yea, they shall all cover their lips. For there is no answer of God. They shall all cover their lips. They're going to cover their lips. What's that? There's no answer from God. Uh, do you remember when they covered their lips in the Old Testament? What they said? Unclean. Unclean. What do you think is coming out of his mouth? It's unclean going to tickle your ears. The prophets, they don't, they don't preach the word of God today. Uh, I remember going one day to a, uh, a preaching event, and I heard the man give us, he gave a preaching, and he, all he did for the whole time was talk about himself. His narrative was about him. And then when he was, uh, he was, done, when he was in his time and he was trying to explain something, he would say things like, well, this preacher down there says this, this guy over here says this, this one. And I was sitting there, and all I could think of was, well, what's the Lord say? You notice that the prophets in the Bible, you know how you tell a prophet? Thus say it, the Lord. Amen. Thus say it. That's what Jesus dealt with. They were astonished at his doctrine, for he spoke to them with authority, like a man who had authority. What authority? He said, thus saith the Lord. You see, if you uh, go on like YouTube, you watch any synagogues or rabbis, you'll hear them say, well, this is what Scripture says. And rabbi this says this, and rabbi that says that. And oh, well, this other guy would say this. You know what you have? You have the mother man's view. You need God's opinion. You need God's word. What's that? Thus saith the Lord. You remember Jesus said, it is written. It is written what, what the Lord wrote. Amen. And the Bible says back to uh, Hosea chapter uh, 4, he says, My people are destroyed for what? For lack of knowledge. For lack of knowledge, they're destroyed. He says, why? Because. Now, it's not because the knowledge isn't there. Watch. Because thou hast done what? Rejected knowledge. knowledge. And what's the, I will also reject thee. Thou shalt be what? No, you're no priest to me. No priest to me, seeing thou hast done what? Forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children, because you forgot my law. I, could you imagine? Look, listen, listen, this is important. I don't think any of you forget you forget God. You don't. It's already, how many of you walk along the day and you talk to him? It's in your head. You talk to him. How many of you have actually been to that point where you just keep it? There's a communication going, there's a communication going, and then you get down to pray and you're like, I don't know what to pray for. I've been talking about that the whole time in my head with it. it it's normal, just so you know, that's normal. Don't, don't get like, oh, I shouldn't be like, look, that's normal. All right? When you get to that point, you don't know what to say. The best thing you can do is read your Bible. Why? You'll find things to say. Not to mention, sometimes you need to talk back to God in His words. But don't use Chronicles chapter 1 and 2, okay? <laughs> I'm only kidding. You bought a team, and this is a few years ago, and she had said it was funny. You remember when we, she funny. You may not remember. She goes, I, I was preaching, and, I, and it came out to say the words of the Lord back to him. So she said, you know, I was at home, and I started reading the book of Chronicles to the Lord. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> you know, this one, we got this guy, the sons of this, the sons of that. And I'm like, well, not everything is going to go that way. I said, why don't you try Psalms? She goes, when I was in Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, what do you get to say? You just keep going. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But, uh, and, and um, no, let's go over to 1 Timothy chapter 6.
since you've forgotten the law of thy God, I, I will also forget thy children. First uh, Timothy uh, chapter 6, look down at verse, at verse number uh, 3, and he says, If any man teach otherwise and consot, consent not to uh, wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according uh, to godliness. Uh, we understand that statement. Look at verse number 8. He says, and, and having food and raiment, let us uh, be there with what? Content. content. Be content with that. But they that will be rich, they fall into temptations and snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and uh, in destruction and perdition. Why is that? For the love of money is the root of all uh, evil, uh, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and, and pierced themselves through with many, uh, with many uh, sorrows. There, right now you have a prosperous Israel. They've forgotten God. You know what's happened? They have a love for money. They have a love for money. They don't see the, the, the storm coming. But you know, just after this, what happens to them? They get taken away into captivity right afterwards. But you ever notice that in the Bible? It's like sudden destruction comes after these things. I will say it like this. If you haven't been watching people uh, there is what we call population growth right now, and it's going real fast. You know that um, every time there has been a population growth in the Bible, you know what God shows God shows up right afterwards, and it's usually sudden destruction. Something's going to happen. Why? Because there's a sudden growth in the population right now. Amen. 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 So uh, let's look down. He says, um, "He says you forgot my law. You forgot the law of thy God, and, and will also I'll also forget uh, thy children, as they were what increased money. So they sinned against me. Ye drink, be merry. Uh, therefore will I change their glory into what shame. shame. Amen. I'll change that glory into shame. Uh, they eat up. Now who's the they right there? Uh, that's the priests." That's the priest he was talking about. Why? He was thought that was the subject of the they. What shall be no priest to me? They eat up the sin of my people. And they set their heart on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests. And I will punish them for their ways and, and reward them their doings. Uh, okay. Uh, Anybody ever hear the old saying, like father, like son? Like father, like son, okay? Uh, your brother Larry wants to be a good man. Why? He knows that boy's going to follow him. Look, he goes into the snow. He's got a pair of boots on. And he has his, has his little son out there. And uh, he's got a pair of boots. You ever see kids wearing them big boots and it's like cloud hoppers and stuff? And, and they're walking behind daddy. And, and Larry looks back. And you know what he notices? His son is actually trying to walk in the same prints of the snow that Larry is. He doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to break stride. He wants to try and walk in who? His footsteps. Like father, like son, okay? But you have to realize something. He's not in front, and Larry's not turning around as the child's walking and trying to walk in the child's footsteps. Why? They don't fit. They don't fit. You can't walk in the steps. Of, they have to walk in your steps rather than you walk in their steps. Okay, there's a reason for these things. Um, but what you notice here, it says they eat up the sin. Uh, they eat up the sin of my people. What's that? Well, the priests are partaking in the same things that the people are. Uh, the people are going to have problems with their music. Okay, and there's the priest. What's he doing? Listening to their music. Uh, the people are having a problem. Uh, going to the casinos, and there's your priest out there. What's he doing gambling and going to the casino? He's eating up on their sin. What's that? That's why he said, look what he said. He said, like people, like priests. It was wrong. It was the backwards of it. The priests were supposed to be the example here. And here they are being the problem. Okay? Uh, you don't think that happens? Yes, it's happening right now. Well, the preachers are starting to partake in the sins of the people. We see it in the modern church today. Okay? Uh, the people don't want to hear the book. 
They want to rearrange the book. They want to change the book. And what are the preachers doing? They're taking it to the people. They're changing it. You see, it's all backwards. What are the priests doing? Well, what's happening is the people, God said there's a sin offering in, Le in, in Leviticus what, chapter 6. And the people uh, are to leave the sin offering. What happens to it? It gets poured onto the ground. They don't partake in the sin offering. It just stays there. Remember why the priest is not supposed to have a part of the sin. That's abomination in Leviticus. What are the people, what is the priest doing here? They're eating it. That's what's happening here. The priests have beget, begun to eat the sin offering. What are they doing? They're taking part of the sin. They're taking part of it. They're being a part of it. Like people, like priests. That's what's happening. Okay, uh, let's go over to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy, chapter four. Uh, a man by the name of Timothy, Paul's instructing him uh, that he's because he's in the ministry, and Paul's giving him advice. And and Timothy's an honest guy. And look what he says. He says, "I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ." I'm going to give you a charge. Who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom? You better be aware. Here's a good charge. He says, "Do what? Preach the word." Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why do we need to do that? Well, look at this. It says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having uh, itchy ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be turned unto what? Fables. When you don't uh, endure strong sound doctrine. Now, here's the part you get, you've got to read in that piece. It says what? They will not endure sound doctrine. What's that tell you? They had it. They won't endure it. That means they had it. Okay? There's the state of the church today. They're not enduring the sound doctrine. Well, they have it. If you look at some of the statements of faith that are out there, you'll notice they're they're not altogether gone. But then you walk into the church and you know what you got? You got a garbage can. They'll say things like, I, I actually read a church and it said that the Bible was the word of God. What? <laughs> you see? The Bible was the word, or even if it says it is the word of God, but it, they, they believe it is, it was. But you have to understand something. Then the guy gets up there and he says this. He says, you know, a better rendering would have been this. Do you understand what he just said? A better rendering would be this. No, the better rendering is what God said. You may not understand it. That's your problem. Okay? You know what the problem is? When you don't understand it, you don't ask the author. You don't. You don't ask the author. You know, most of the time, I tell you, one of the biggest errors I did when I was uh, young and even when I first started uh, pastoring was you get into this realm of uh, you ask God or you'll just go to a guy who has a commentary out there and hear what that guy has to say. Okay? I can guarantee you sooner or later it's not going to be the right way, right thing to, that's going to be there for you. Okay? God said, what? Well, reach up to me, I'll tell you. Uh, the, who, who guides you in all things? The Holy Ghost is the one that guides you and, and is the one that is you're learning from. Now, I'm not telling you that God won't use you. He puts teachers in front of you. But you have to understand the first place is where? To the Lord. Is to the Lord. The author of the book, people. It says, um, going back in verse number 10, for they shall eat and not have enough they shall commit whoredom and shall not increase. Because why? Because they have left off 
to take heed to the Lord. They don't even heed to the Lord anymore. You know what happens when you don't heed to the Lord? You become unsatisfied. You're unsatisfied. Hey, I want more. I'm unsatisfied. Okay, vanity, vexation of spirit. That's the best you got. What's that? It's empty and it's unsatisfying. Did you ever read an NIV? It's, it's unsatisfying. It's empty. It's unsatisfying. And then what he says to him, he says, why? You're going to be unfruitful there too. Unsatisfied. You're not going to increase. Uh, you're not going to get that fruit that you need. Okay, uh, God said to you, said, uh, be uh, fruitful. Be fruitful. And then what's the next part? Multiply. So they're different things. See, you were always taught, you go, you go to any church, and you know what they're going to teach you? Being fruitful means you have kids. Mm. Is that what that said? No, the second part, multiply, he said. Multiply, what's that? He wants you to get be right first. He wants you to have these things first. Hey, look, he wants you to have joy in your heart, patience, and all these things. Why? So you can actually have the kids grow. We like to multiply first, and then all of a sudden we think, well, that's going to make me righteous. You know, if me and my wife, me and my wife, we're arguing. Boy, oh boy, we're arguing. You know, if we just have a kid, that'll stop the arguments. That work? You ever have a kid? I know somebody that had it. When that baby's a little baby, how, how, how are things? Great. <laughs> you know, 2 o'clock in the morning, you, you worked all day, that, you figured that baby could have sleep through the night. You know, it never... Our daughter, oh, Nicola, she was, she was like one day. I swear, the first year was great, and it was just one day. I was dealing with the Terminator. It, and it lasted for a while. She just started crying. She never stopped. It was 1.30 in the morning. She's probably going to listen. That, you did it. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she kept going. You know, I'd go to bed at night, and then all of a sudden she started crying. I don't know what's going on. You want bottle? You want this? You want that? What's going to stop this kid? Okay? And she kept going. And, and let me tell you something. I'm just going like that most of the time. I, I was asleep at, the, at work at times. Um, you know, children take time. It's not going to solve your problems. And with that kind of stress at, at that point, and you've been through stresses that are outside, men come home. How, how many of you have married, well, married women who've been married and everything, and it's a hard day at work, and, and, and your husband uh, comes home, and it's been a day where he's just been glad that that bell rang, and he comes home, and he takes it right out on you. Comes through that door, or how about you women, you've been, you've been dealing with the kids all day, it's been frustrating, everything's gone wrong, whatever you cook's been burnt, whatever you did it went wrong, the vacuum cleaner don't work, that window won't shut, and the man walks through the door, and he becomes the enemy as he walks through. You'd be better off if you were fruitful and then turned around and started multiplying, you know? Well, I didn't deal with that a little better. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's look down in verse number 11. It says, uh, Whoredom and wine and new wine have done what? Taken thy heart. That's what prosperity can do. It can take your heart from what? The truth. My people ask uh, at their stocks. What's the stocks? The statues and the idols, the stocks. They, my people ask counsel at the stocks. There was a man years ago by the name of Cornelius Vanderbilt. He had lost a son, okay, uh, and his house, he had, Cornelius Vanderbilt at the time was the richest man in the United States. He had $75 million in cash sitting in his house. 75 in cash sitting in his house. And the man's son died, and he started walking around his house, and he had these huge artifact statues, and his workers that were in the house being that he was in the south and there's a lot of gospel going around, said that he used to stand in front of the statues and look for an answer. And he used to shake his head. Why? Because his riches and what he bought weren't the answer. My people ask counsel where? At those idols. 
and, and their staff declareth unto them, and for their spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err, and they have gone a whoring from under uh, their God, their statues. They reject God's word. Okay, do you know what these statues and the stocks are today? The statue and the stocks are on amongst the uh, people of God is the originals. That's the statue of today. That's the stocks. Okay, you really want to know the Bible? You got to get to the original scripture. You got to get to the originals. That's the that's the uh, stock of the day. Just so you know, if anybody asks the question uh, or brings it out, they said, "Well, they know anything about the originals." Uh, remember people, they've never seen them, they've never touched them, they've never done anything with them. There is no originals, there is no original scripture, there is no, uh, there is no uh, Septuagint, that's a lie. Ask them to produce all these things. It's all lies. They're learning off of some other man who told them something, who told them, who told something of something to somebody and told something to something to somebody. Hey, look, what do you got in front of you? You got a King James Bible. Has ever done you wrong? said prove all things keep to that which is good you don't need any of that stuff you don't need to learn Greek you don't need to learn Hebrew you need to learn English better why English is a better language English is a better language I just so you know I speak Greek there's a lot of times you have to actually put the pronouns in what's that they're incomplete people you have to assume the pronouns in Greek just to step, just to give you some stuff uh, verse number 13 says they, they sacrifice on the tops of the mountains of spiritual adultery in the high places. They burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars. There's trees and elms uh, because the shadow thereof is what? It's good. They like to be in the shadows of things. The shadows is, is behind it. Uh, Therefore, your daughters shall commit whoredom and your spouses uh, shall commit adultery. I will punish your daughters when they commit I will not excuse me I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom nor your spouses when they commit adultery for themselves are separated with whores and they sacrifice with harlots therefore the people that doth not understand a shell of fall he says uh, why is that well look he says I will not punish them you ever notice that God doesn't punish right away yeah. God doesn't punish you right away. How many people have done something? You don't get struck by something. You don't die. Wages of sin is death. He's still here. Yeah. God had the right to kill you? Yeah. What, if he, what if judgment was swift? Okay, that's a mercy, just so you know, of God. That, he's not, that he didn't do it swift. But people, he says he's not going to do it here. I will not. Uh, he's going to hold back. You know, I learned one thing in the Bible. I learned this. Uh, I, I preach it. God's in the mercy more than anything else than the law. He loves mercy. He wants to give you mercy. Okay? Did you ever notice that Saul was a pretty bad character uh, towards his end? Now, Saul, you have to understand something Saul said. Samuel said, you're going to be here with me. Okay? In paradise. Saul saved with his sons. Okay? But Saul was a good character. Do you remember when Saul died? He was up on the hill. When did they find him? In the morning. He had all night to repent. God gives a place to repent. That's a mercy of God. Why doesn't he do this judgment? Why doesn't he come down and do judgment swift? He's looking to try and get you to repent. Amen. Did you ever notice the church age is going, this is going down, right? We all understand what the falling away. What did God say that he wanted you to do? Be faithful. Amen. Desire to repent. Amen. Okay. You know what voice you're hearing from God today more than anything? He says, rebuke and chase me. Rebuke and chastening is what you're hearing. Look, it's like this. This is Christianity today. Who's there? Rebuke and chastening. Boom. They shut the door. I want to hear good things. I need positive things. You know, you need to be positive. You need to give me positive things all the time. That's the church today. You know what you want? You want a taffy. You want a taffy. You know what Christian, you know what Christian men are about today? But well, I can tell you this, uh, most, of, most of the time it's like uh, I hear them. The women are tougher than men today, just like that. The women are tougher than the men in the churches, and you can see how many, what we got. You know, the women are, are holding out. Uh, the freedom fighters are gone. You hear all these people, I'm going to stand up for my rights. They've closed us down. 
where are, where's all these guys? Right. Men are freedom fighters, people. They're not freedom fighters, the women are. The women are better freedom fighters than the men. They were here, they're the ones. How do you know? I've been doing this for a while. It's always been the women. Men can't stand up to that. When they do stand up, they're not, I'm not talking all men, I'm talking men in general, okay? Um, they're not freedom fighters anymore. He, they just sit back. He says, um, verse number 15, now though Israel play the heart of, yet not Judah, not, not Judah offend, yet let not Judah offend, and come uh, not ye unto Gilgal, neither ye up, neither go ye up, I'm sorry, I can't read, I need to go back to second grade, to Beth Haven, nor swear uh, the Lord liveth. Uh, he's trying to tell them, stay simple, stay simple, stay small, stay small. Judah hasn't, Judah, let not Judah offend. He's like, uh, um, uh, Israel is kind of like Romanistic. Okay, they got the, uh, if you'll notice what's happening at this time, Amos starts to preach. Remember Amos? Uh, Amos goes in and what's he preaching against? They got a big chapel over there and they become making it a rock concert. And he has to preach outside. Uh, what's happening is they're becoming Romanistic. Uh, what's Judah? They're saved. You always have a, you'll have a remnant. And then, of course, what happened to Judah? There was still a remnant inside, and Judah went that way. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what's happening today is the Protestants are already gone. But what's happening today is the people, the remnant that's left, we're all split. Going this way. Uh, haven't you seen it? The remnant is now walking away. Amen. Uh, they think they're right, too. Every man is right. No man ever loveth, uh, hateth himself, just so you know. Uh, verse number 16, for what happened? Israel slided back. They're black backsliding. As a backsliding heifer, okay? Uh, now uh, the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large uh, place, okay? Um, just so you know, 16 is the number of love, and that's what he's talking in here says they've slept back. Now, verse number 17 goes throughout almost the whole Bible. Ephraim is joined to what? Idols. Now, that's one of uh, Joseph's sons. He says, let him alone. Uh, you'll notice in chapter 7 of, of Revelation, when he starts naming the tribes that are spiritual, you'll notice Ephraim's not in there anymore. Mm -hmm. Why? He's an idolater now. God can't deal with an idolater. Okay? So he's, he would remember, he was the fruitful son. What happened to the fruitful son? He went to idolatry. What did God say? When they're in idolatry, what are you supposed to do? Leave him alone. Leave him alone, people. Leave him alone. Verse 18, they, their drink is uh, sour. Uh, their drink isn't from heaven, obviously. It's sour. They have committed whoredom continually. Now look, her rude, rural, rulers, her rulers with shame do what? Do love. Give ye. They want stuff. Give ye. Uh, the, um, it says the horse leech have two daughters yelling, give, give, in the Bible. It says in uh, Proverbs, what's that, 30, I think it is? Give, give. You know what the preachers are? Hey, look, I got this can over here. It's the building fund. Hey, I got this over here. It's that. Hey, look, people, we need this thing to be filled up. We got, we, you know, this place runs off of money. And what does God say? He says, if you want to, if you want to, but not the preachers today. What do they do? They, well, you know, we got this and we got that. We got other things going on here. Now I feel bad. I had a can over there once. Amen. Amen. He says, uh, look at that last verse. He says, the wind hath bound her up in her wings, and they shall be ashamed. Why? Because of their sacrifices. You know what's going to run into this afterwards? This is, they've been taking away Malachi. You ever read Malachi chapter 1 about the sacrifices? Man, they just turn around, they bring the worst sacrifices around, and God's like, I don't want that. Why is that? They didn't bring their best, and they didn't bring their heart. They brought their sacrifice, and that's all they did. And that it wasn't a sacrifice about it. You just took whatever in the field was broken, and you gave it to God. God, why don't you give them your best? I've watched it for years. I've watched it for years in the church, people. Okay? Uh, all right, let's get let's get to praying and, and pray for, pray for the service. Father, thank you, Lord God. And I just ask you, Lord, to bless us. Lord, bless the next hour, Lord. Let us have a good time. 
Uh, Lord God, a good rebuke this morning in Sunday school, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to bless us now. Let us have a good time in thee. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. What you say?
All right. Does anybody get to the sixth level of Jumanji yet? I said, you know, this whole thing, this crazy dream we're in or something. Yeah. Please, would you wake me up or something? I just want to get over this thing. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious that the governor opened up last night and said, he turned around and he said, well, now the churches can meet at 25% or something like that. The churches can meet. And I'm just sitting there going, well, when do we stop? <laughs> you see the restaurants all eating outside. Yes, yes, they're allowed to do that. I, I feel bad for the people in Pennsylvania. That guy keeps them on, keeping them under locks. In Maine. Maine, yeah, Maine. Michigan. Michigan with Whitmore, you know. I mean, a lot of, uh, the bad part is that, you know, the restaurant industry, a lot of the uh, Italians and Greeks got into that industry, and um, and they did very well, and they, people don't realize they started out as dishwashers. You know, Italians came over here, the Greeks, they couldn't get a job. Nobody wanted them, they're Greece fans, you know. They had one or two ways to get jobs in Philadelphia. They went down to the shipyards because Italians were good builders of ships. And the other other thing they could do was possibly they got into the restaurant business, and that fell upon them because they were um, their eating habits at the job when they went during the depression. They used to bring like sliced meat and and things. So they uh, they went into an area of Philadelphia called Hog Island, which when you hear the word hoagie, that's where it actually comes from. Hog Island was a shipbuilding place, and that they were lunch meats. They started the lunch meats and everything. And then from there, they realized that they were able to sell them to other people, and they opened up restaurants and takeout joints and stuff like that. And the Greeks kind of followed in the same way, and uh, they, they established their families with all these things. And how's it doing now? It's not doing too well. You know, they're, they're, they've been, it's been taken away from them. It, it's a shame. <clears throat> it's a shame like that, but. Lord's coming back. <laughs> All right, let's go to um, one one three. Let's go to glory to His name. Amen. Amen. It's good to be saved. You're learning about being saved today. That's the pretty much the uh, preaching today. All right, and at the first. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where the cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood of Christ. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart.
God leads. Our Father God in heaven, we just praise you, Lord. Thank you for this day you've given us. Thank you for our church. Thank you for a good Friday night, Lord. It was just a blessing, Lord. Uh, we just uh, pray that you are glorified, Lord, through all that. We just love you, God, and we just pray you'll be with the pastor today and just fill him up, Lord, and just let him preach to us, Lord. Just draw us near to you, God. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. 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 Let's go to 257. No, that's wrong. Uh, I have to find it. It's up there. Here, Rose. 235. Mm -hmm. He set me free. Amen. Who doesn't know this song? You'll learn it today. Once like a bird in prison, I dwell. Amen. All right. Oh, once like a bird in prison, I dwell. No freedom from my sorrow. Better? Easier? Okay, we all got it? Yeah. All right. Now I'm climbing higher in shade. Darkness of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground. And glory to God, I'm overbound. He set me free, and he set me free. And he broke the bonds of present for me. I'm glory now, my Jesus, to see for glory to God. He set me free. Live by the sin and things that confound. Not all this world shall turn me around. Daily I'm working, I'm praying to and glory to God. I'm going through. He set me free and he set me the bounds of prison for me. i glory now, my Jesus, to seek for glory to God. He set me free. Amen. Have a seat. Uh, you going to do something today? I know. Hit me at the last minute, right?
right. said anything. I just like you to walk around like that. divided into three parts. I've been going over this. Why do you keep saying it every week? I want you to make sure it gets in your head. Okay? Three parts it's divided in. Chapters 1 to 8 is the doctrine of salvation. Okay? What chapter are we in? 8. We're still in the doctrine of salvation. Okay? The next part we'll go into in chapter 9 will be Israel, the state of Israel past, present, and future, 9, 10, and 11. So the past will be in chapter 9, the present will be in chapter 10, and chapter 11 is going to be the future of Israel. Then after that will be the uh, will of God or walk of the believer, how you should need to walk after all this. Now, inside of salvation, salvation is divided up into three parts. Remember, this is a book that needs to be taught, not, not a book that needs to be uh, just elaborate. It needs to be very precise. Why? If, there, if your doctrine does not come out of Romans, it's not your doctrine. This is the doctrinal book. Charismatic churches go into Corinthians. That's why they want to be, make fools of themselves in churches. The reason they go into Corinthians, Corinthians is a book that they're getting reproved. Just read the first chapter. They're being 
You know, did you ever have, a, you had children, right? You don't, you don't, this is when you're turning around, you're yelling at them or telling them to do something or you're rebuking the child. You don't tell them that's the doctrine, do you? That's how we run the house around here. The stuff I just told you, that's what you do. That's what they do anyway, but that's not what you're supposed to do. Okay, so inside of your uh, salvation, you have its three parts. Those three parts are salvation, getting saved, right? Okay, salvation, sanctification. Or I should say, this is wrong, salvation, justification. Three parts of salvation. Justification. And then the last one is glorification. Justification, sanctification, glorification. Justify. That was you when you got saved. Okay? You can now go and stand before the Lord. You got saved to one of his kids. You can stand before the Lord. This is the problem is here. This is where you all get messed up, right there. Hey, Miss Adrian, she was honest about it. She said, I, this is, I'm, not, I'm, I'm confused. You know what she thought? She thought you, when you did all those, these things that you started to do, you were unsaved, man. There's no way you could be saved. There's no, look, you can be saved and act like the devil. You can be saved and act like the devil, people. And, and, and Paul was dealing with that. He made sure he understood. That's one of the things he's dealing with. He's arguing about why. He's an apostle, number one. Nobody believed he was an apostle. Why? He wasn't with one of those 12 that were in, walked around with Jesus. He wasn't there. So they didn't believe he was an apostle. Next thing that happened, he was trying to tell them that what he is saying now, he's the apostle to the Gentiles. He's the guy. Okay? It's been put over to me. I'm Peter and them. They're talking to the Jews down there. But Paul, he's the guy that's going to go to Rome. He's the guy that's going to go and preach to the Greeks. He's the guy that's going to preach to the non-Jews. And what he's saying is, he's saying, look, Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. It was the first time that just that is there. Okay? Just like that. I declare unto you the gospel. But what, is, what comes around is the third point he had to fight with is now you, you born again, you think you can do anything you want. You know, you're born again. What, can I go get saved and go murder people? Actually, yeah, you can. Let me ask you something. Is that what you want to do? No. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, uh, you have a kid and you have a child. How would you like to wake up one day and murder somebody? How would you be? Mm. You be nice about that? Oh yeah, I might go out and murder people. <clears throat> no, you're kind of upset, aren't you? And let me ask you something, when your kids are disrespectful to you, how do you feel? Mm. They're wrong, right? Doesn't make them upset, it just makes them, uh, just makes you mad at them and makes them a jerk, okay? And then the last one is glorification. And when's that gonna happen? Oh, yes. Amen. And the rapture. Right. You're gonna be changed, you're gonna be glorified, you're gonna look like Jesus Christ. You're going to be glorified. How many people don't want to sin anymore? You're not even going to think about it. Just not even going to think about it. Amen. All right. So there are the three areas. Now, what we're dealing with now today, you have, must understand, we're not dealing with being saved. That got you to Calvary. And that got you to the cross. Now that you're saved, you can go one or two ways. Why? Because... We talked to you about this. You got two people inside you in chapter seven. Remember, he said, "How did I picture it?" You got you guys, all you older people, remember the cartoons? The guy with the little angel and the little devil up here, and the angel saying, "You know, don't do that. Be nice." And then the devil up there saying, "Kill him." You know, then you remember them shows, okay? Uh, they're not far from the truth on that, but it's your, the spirit that's inside you. Have an old man inside you that likes to do the old man things that likes to do those things that you did back there. Then you got the new man inside of you that what? Wants to do the things of the Lord. You're struggling. Hey, look, when the, when them psychologists said you're all schizophrenic or you're schizophrenic, guess what? You be. But they don't understand you. It, it's something where you go, it, look, you don't, you don't need none of that. 
just get the Bible, get some prayer, and if it gets to that point, just you know, come see me. I'll, I'll show you the Bible. I'll show you where things are, okay? They don't go to the, they don't know you. They, how can they understand you? They don't understand, they don't understand even what you're made of. All you have to do is ask them, saying, look, people, I, I, I went to a psychologist. They made me go. I turned around, I asked them, I, I said, I got some questions for you. Name me five normal people. Well, they could not name them. I said, well, if you can't name what's normal, how do you tell what's abnormal? I'm going to give it to you like this. All you people are normal. Jesus Christ was abnormal. Okay. You got saved. You got two people. You can go the way of the old man. Or you can go to the new man. You can go to the old man and drink the old wine. What's that? The hooch. Or you can go the way of the new man and drink the new wine, which is grape juice. You catching me? Very easy. Sanctification. Uh, how many moms we got here with kids? Yeah. Kids go out, bare feet. What happens when they play in the sandbox? They come in the house and it's all over your floor, right? So you've got to clean their feet and you've got to clean what portion they walked on. That is the look at it. Remember, Jesus got them up in the room. He got those disciples together. And what does he do? He girds himself. He gets down. He starts cleaning their feet. It's not about the physical. He's showing them something. He's trying to say, look, you're walking in the world all day. What are you getting? You're getting dirty walking in that world. You need to be cleaned up. What do they clean them up with? The washing of the what? The Word of God. The washing of the Word of God. You come in here. You get the Word of God. What does it do? It cleans you up. Yeah. It's going to clean you up. Okay? So, you got your choice from that point on. Still saved, Miss H. Still saved. But you can act like the devil. Okay? So now, let's look at the Word of God now in uh, chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, and let's stand for the Word of God. And the Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Jesus Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Father, thank you for this time, and thank you for the Word of God. Talk to our hearts now, Lord. Talk to us individually, Lord. We came to hear from you, not from just the preacher. We came to hear these words, Lord Father, from you, and to teach us something, and to feed us today, Lord, and let us be filled up, and let us go home overfilled if we can, Lord, please. We love you, Lord, want to serve you, and we love Jesus Christ. We thank you for salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's be seated now. Did you notice how that, just that reading, was, was looking right at that? It's looking right at that. Now, I'm going to tell you how this is read. If you had a modern Bible in your hand, if you were to grab an NIV, an NASV, a New King James, any of them junks, throw them in the trash, they ain't helping you anyway. Get yourself out that King James, start reading that book. Why? Because if you read in Romans chapter 8 what you're going to find there, when it says, therefore now, uh, there, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, they stop the verse right there. You know why? They don't understand the rest of the part, and that's why, Miss Adrian, you've been struggling. Because it's like they don't think that you can't be saved like that. Okay? They're, what they're doing is they're confusing you. Now, I'm going to show you how that is. It says here, in the Word of God, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now watch the conditions. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, he's not talking about the condemnation from God. You've already passed that. You're on the other side of the cross, people. You're saved. Where's the condemnation coming from? Well, it's going to come from three parts. Condemnation's going to come from. Where's the first part? Well, the first part is the people condemning you. Right. 
What's that? Well, you're a Christian. How can you do those things? Well, how, how many times you heard it? You, you feel, I look, I tell people like this. Hey, look, if you're going to go out there and act like the devil, don't tell them you go to our church. Right. Please, don't tell them. Hey, don't tell them where you go. Why? Because I don't, I don't, them people, you know what they're doing? They're condemning you. They condemn you behind your back, people. If you're going to live like the devil, believe me, they're going to tell you you are. Oh, why, well, last week you're in church. Now look at you. You see, that's exactly what the world's going to say. What is it? People condemn you. I could say it like this, man. You do good things and people condemn you. Bad news travels fast. Good news never travels anywhere. The moment you do something wrong, boy, everybody knows about it all around town. But you've done some good things in life. Hey, look, I know some of you raise your kids real good. But I'll tell you what, you do one thing wrong, man. One of your kids do something wrong, they're right on you. Mm -hmm. They're condemning you. But God says walk in the Spirit. You walk in the Spirit. There's no condemnation for them that walk in the Spirit. He's talking about there's no condemnation from the world. You don't have to worry about them. You worry about your relationship with Him. Where's the condemnation? The first part, it comes from people. Where's the second part of condemnation? Go to uh, Let's go over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter three. Look down at uh, verse number. Look at verse number six. Verse number six. He says. Um, he says, "For this sort, for this sort, are they which creep into houses." And look what it says. It says, "Lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lust, ever, ever learning and never." Uh, never able to come to the knowledge of uh, the truth. Uh, you know what happens? Uh, you get people that will come to you and they'll start to, uh, they'll start to uh, try and lead you away, subvert you, okay? Uh, what are you saying? What I'm saying is uh, people won't always condemn you. You also got another enemy. You got the devil. He's going to condemn you. He's going to come after you. You got to understand something, people. You know what the, you know what the devil does? You know, when you're going to stand before, when you're going to be saved, you're saved and everything, and, and, and the devil knows it, what he does is he goes to God and he says, hey, you know what? I saw Larry last week. I saw him last week. You know what? That guy, I saw him down there. You know what he's doing? He cheated this guy out of things. I saw Larry last week. You know that guy's lying all over the place. How could he be one of your kids that doesn't act like it? See, that's what the devil's accusing him of. He's an accuser of what? The brethren. Who are the brethren? They're saved. Yep, amen. He's an accuser of, hey, look, he can't accuse you if you didn't do something wrong. He's not going to go to God. Look at Larry over there. Uh, he's in charge doing a good thing. He's not telling him that. Why? That works in his favor. What's, look, there's no, you have to understand, there's no condemnation when you're walking in the Spirit. He has nothing to say. But boy, oh boy, you start work, walking in the flesh, and it may happen. You're an old, you're old man. It may creep up on you. And you know what? The, the devil's sitting there going, I know Larry. Ah, there he goes again. You know, there he goes again. You see, the devil can condemn you. Uh, where's another one? Let's go over to, uh, let's go over to uh, 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. It's near the back of the book, just before Revelation. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Now watch verse 20. It says, For if our heart does what? For if our heart does what? Condemn you. Yes. Condemn you. You don't think your heart can condemn you? Right. Hey, how do you think your heart... Hey, look, you ever say something to somebody? You know you said something wrong. And you walk out of there and you say, you know, I shouldn't have said that. Mm. Your heart can condemn you. Okay? How many of you, how many of you uh, go, to, go to the bathroom like to talk in the mirror about situations that were before and you make a mess of everything? How many of you talk to yourselves, don't even realize, hey, look, I'll give you a good one. 
Uh, this one happened to me. I, I had a problem with this. Okay, so I, I, I can, I'll put it out there. Um, I had a problem with, I would have a situation come up, and I would start to think conspiracy in my head. You ever do that? Like, this person doesn't like me, and you, you got that going. I, I can tell you, most of your conversations, the person isn't thinking what you're thinking. Right, amen. The person isn't thinking the way you want them to think. Look, especially if it's men and women, men can't think like women. The only way a man can think like a woman is if he uses his Bible. Because the Bible will tell him how a woman thinks. See, you think you read the Bible. Let me tell you something. It's already read you. You have to understand that. It reads you more than you read it. It's like doing this. This is what some of you need sometimes. You need a mirror that looks just like this. And you look into it and it says what it's going to tell you is who you really are in that mirror. No man ever didn't love himself. Nobody turns around and doesn't love Every one of you love yourself. You have to realize that. That's, God says that. In the Bible, it says, you, every man, you love yourself. No man ever hated himself. Well, I hate myself. Don't, 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 don't be too confident in that. You all have a love for yourself. Okay? But your heart can condemn you. So you can be condemned three different ways. What's that? You can be condemned uh, by the uh, people around you. You can be condemned uh, by uh, the devil uh, around you. You can be condemned by your own heart. Your own heart can condemn you. Uh, back to, uh, uh, for, look at 1 John chapter 3. He says, for our heart condemn us. God is greater than what? Our heart. Amen. And he knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have a confidence with who? Toward God. Right. When you're right with God, you know what? You're walking in the spirit, your heart doesn't condemn you. You're condemned, your heart's condemning you. Why? Because you know you did something wrong. So your heart can condemn you. People can condemn you. The devil can condemn you. Your heart can condemn you. Uh, you got to understand, he's not talking about salvation. You're already saved. But you can sure do some crazy things once you're saved. Okay? He says, now look, let's keep going after it. He says, who walk not. Walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay? What he's be dealing with in here, he's dealing with Comparing Christian versus Christian. Saved person versus saved person. Okay? There's a lot of saved people out there. We know them. Guess what? There's some saved people got the right book, got the right uh, walk. But guess what? There's a whole bunch of them got the wrong book, got the wrong walk. You've got to understand that. There's a lot that have the, they just don't have the book. People come in here, they got NIV. I've seen them before, and NASVs. You ever notice I don't take the book out of their hand for all their life? I let God do it. I teach them. I teach them so that they understand which the one is the right one. Well, guess what? You're going to get to every, every time, because there's six, you got to understand something. There's thousands of words that are taken out. So what happens is they start reading, and then they re then I'm up here preaching, and they go, wait, that my Bible don't say that. Of course it doesn't. It, of course it doesn't. And as you go on, wait a second. And then they say, why doesn't it do it? And they start to ask. And then God moves them. God will move them. What's that? You start reading it. Look, how many people noticed on their own that there were verses missing until somebody told them? Mm. Not many. You know why? I'll show you why. They, what they do. They're real smart about it. Look in your Bible right now. You'll notice something. Numbers go one, two, three, and they go down like this, right? Did you notice that? Verse to verse to verse. Pick up your NIV. You know what they do? Here's verse 1. Verse 2 is over here. Verse 3 is here. In this, as it goes down the line, you know why? You won't notice that this one's missing. And it's over here. It's number 4. You didn't notice it. Right here. Know how I know? I came to somebody asked me a question. It was Miss Adrian. I turned around and I said, show me Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Remember that? Yeah. Excuse me. I was, I was, Acts chapter 8, verse 37. I said, can you show me that verse? She turned around and she went to it, tried to look at it, and, and she read me verse 30, uh, 38 or something like that, 36 or something, and she read it to me, and then all of a sudden, you know what happened? She said, well, it's not there. Amen, yeah, yeah. The number was there, but it wasn't there. I said, do you believe that? Do you believe that? What? Do you believe that verse? Well, how, how can you? It's not there. And you know what it says? that you need to believe before you're baptized. That's all it says. You know what that gives people the right to do? Put water on babies' heads. 
You go around dunking babies in, the, in, 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 a, in a baptism and giving them a false sense of security. Why? Because you're supposed to get saved before you get baptized. Could you imagine taking 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 out of there? What's that? There's only three places in the whole Bible that tell you where the Godhead is and who the Godhead is. The Father, the Word, or the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And you know what it does? It takes that verse out of there. Now, let me ask you a question. Why would you want to take that one out of there? Right. Doesn't even make sense. You, want, you can't find... Look, you grab an NIV right now and bring it to me, and you show me where God, where it gives you the full Godhead right in one verse. It does not keep it. It does not. You know what that's for? Because you've got, a, you've got a bunch of Jehovah Witnesses out there that can now read the Bible because they don't believe Jesus is God. Amen. Is that helping you out? Is that helping you out? Look, bring your book. I don't have a problem with it. I'll show you all the things. But the thing is, I don't want you to know the King James Bible is the Word of God because I told you. I want you to get down on your hands and knees and ask God. It'll be much better when God shows you. Because you can go back and forth if I show you. Now listen to me. He says there's people, they walk after the flesh, and then there's people that walk after the spirit. We're comparing Christian to Christian. Go to Philippians chapter 3. If you went past Colossians, you went too far. It's right after Ephesians. Philippians chapter 3, look at verse number 13. He says, brethren, that's people that are saved. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, what's that? Forgetting those things that are what? Behind me. That Forgetting those things that are behind me, what's that? They're the times when you were a mess. Mm -hmm. Forgetting those, look, forget those things. Forget them. One of the biggest problems you have is you keep remembering those things. You sin and then you, you go down in the dumps. How many have you done that? Amen. Look, he, what did he just say? Forget those things. Forget those things, he says. Forgetting those things which are behind. That's history. And what? Reaching forth unto those things which are before. Press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We are supposed to go forward, not backwards. Stop living in the past. Okay, you messed up. Repent, go forward. How easy is that? You know what your problem is? You get into the dumps. Especially your mommies. You got a problem with depression, don't you? You get into the dumps. You got you get you, I, I can tell you this one now. You got two kids, you'll have uh, like like an orphan, you have two kids that, that that'll that are always around. Hey, you know what I'll talk to you and everything else. And then you got that one who doesn't want to be around, and you know what happens to that? You concentrate on that one. Am I right? Yes. You're so worried about that one. And you know what happens? You forget about the two of them with you. That's the problem with preachers. You know what the problem is preachers is? One guy walks out of here. And you know what I used to do? I used to run after the guy. Oh, please. Worrying about that one. You know what happened? I should have been worrying about the ones that are actually here. Give them the time of day. Why? They're the ones that want to be here. No, none of you. I haven't made anybody come here except for Miss Yvonne. <laughs> you have, it's voluntary. You've got to want to be here. Okay? Amen. Concentrate on those ones that want to be there. Amen. Going back to Romans chapter 7. He says, chapter 8, excuse me, you're right Look at verse number two. Man, we haven't got to verse number two. I don't know what I'm going to do. He says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath done what? Hath made me free from what law? The law of sin and of death. What's that mean? That's telling you you don't have to sin. Right. 
Right. Now that you're saved, Miss Adrian, you got God inside of you, you got an ability not to sin. Right. Before you didn't have it, you didn't have the ability not to. It just came upon you. You did things. You tried, but it still happened. Now you have the ability not to sin. It may happen, that's why we gotta confess, but you have the ability not to sin. I always say it like this. How many people are sinning when they're reading the Bible? None. So read it more. <laughs> Amen. How many people are, how many people cuss when they're praying? Do that more than. Amen. Just a good thing. Amen. So he says, you don't have to sin. Verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son. Now look what it says. It doesn't say he was sinful flesh, but he, what does it say? In the likeness of sinful flesh. Okay? In the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Okay? He, uh, he says, you want to look at something, that's the cross. He, he did away with it at the cross. That's what Christ did. What you couldn't do, you you had a problem. You kept running to the sin and running to the sin and running to the law of sin. Christ came. He died for sin and he says, look, I'm inside you now. Uh, you got saved. I'm inside you. I'm going to give you an ability to conquer this stuff. Okay? How many people have seen that ability in their life? Amen. You have seen this. Okay? Uh, the law made you a sinner. How's that? Well, the law told you you were covetous. Uh, the law told you that you were a liar. The law told you these things. The law is not bad. It told you the truth. But it couldn't do the things that Christ did because the law couldn't take away sin. It just told you were sin, got you to the point where you realized it, and then it brought you to your knees and lifted you up and said, God, I need you. That's the difference. And that's how you got saved. The law told you you were a sinner. Verse number four. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled how? In us. Now how's that? Well, you're in the new man. The righteousness of the law. What's that doing the right thing now? You're, all those uh, thou shalt not, you're not doing them anymore. You're not doing the shall nots. You're trying. You're actually trying. You come in here and this bald guy with a big nose starts yelling at you. What's that mean? It's getting you washed up. Getting your reminders going. Okay? Verse number, he says, The righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who do what? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now this is an A-B conversation. He says he's going to say flesh, and he's going to say the spirit. He's going to say carnal-minded and spiritually-minded. Carnal, uh, anybody here ever eat chili con carne? That's chili with what? Meat, Meat flesh. Carne, carnal, means flesh. Okay? Just trying to help you out. Let's read this slowly. He says, who walk not after the flesh, but after what? The spirit. So there's two ways you can walk. Spirit or after the flesh. Spirit, new man, or after the flesh, old man. It's an A-B conversation. We'll just say uh, A and we'll say B. How's that? Helps you out. Now watch how it does it. It says, who walk not after the flesh. You're walking after, but after the spirit. A, B. Watch. For they, verse 5, for they that are after the the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Those that are after the flesh do these things. A, look at the next part. He says, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. That's the B. Or the, yeah, the B. Verse number six. Four, this is the reason why. For to be carnally minded, the flesh is death. That's why it's going down. But the spiritually minded, life and peace. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you something right here 
that most preachers don't even know. Go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to show you what's naturally inside of you. There are things that are naturally inside of you. There are things that are not naturally inside of you. They are wickedness. They're from the devil. But there are things that are naturally inside of you that you fight with every day. Sometimes uh, uh, they, they can control you. Galatians chapter 5. We all there? You all need to understand this. Go to, go to verse 19. We're going to start in 19. Okay, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Anybody doesn't understand what manifest means? That means it appears. It's, 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 it's there now. It appears. The, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. You should be listening. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions. What's the next one? Heresies are naturally in you. Look down. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? What he's saying is, look, there's this in you. You have an ability to do these things. I know what you're saying. I don't think about murder. I, I understand, but you do think of these things that are in there. They are naturally there. Now, I want you to notice something. Did you notice that like things like homosexuality are not in there? Pedophilia is not in there? You know that what that is? That's called wickedness. That's not even natural. And in Romans, that comes out that tells you that's an unnatural thing. These are the things that are actually naturally in you. They're not right, like they're not okay to do them, but they're there. They're in you. Why? You're, you've got to understand something. When you got saved, you're, you're, you're like a exceedingly, God says, has not, he says, you are, your thoughts are wicked from your youth. You're conspiring in somebody. First thing you did was you lie. How many people lie in here? None. All right. We, we got to understand that. It's in you. It's in you. Look, all I have to do is real fast. Look, Yvonne tries to live a great life, right? And, 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 I, and I understand. I've watched her, okay? But if I put her back up against that wall, if the authorities do, and her back's up against the wall, she'll lie like a rug. How do you know? Well, I, I know. How many of you would lie for your children? None. How many do you have? Mm -hmm. You have. You know what? You have lied to the kids. Is lying good? No. But you have to understand something. It's in you to do these things. God doesn't paint a good picture of man. He understands that. If there was no, look, if there was no, just you got to understand something. If there were no Christians in the world, there would have been no hospitals. The hospitals were made by Christians. If there were no Christians in this world, guess what? There would be no charities. Guess who started them? All the things in this world that were started that helped mankind, like just so you know the word hospital, where does that come from? Hospitality. You were told to be hospitable in the Bible. Where do you think it comes from? Everything. You go down the line and everything that has been good and everything that has been, God moved his people to do these things. We've abused them later on, but they started out good. Okay, those are the things. He says, these are the things of the flesh. Now stay in Galatians. The good part is coming, people. Now watch, you have the carnally minded that work to death. And now, but look at verse 22, the changeover. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no what? There is no law. You're not subject to it. Why? Because you're doing the right thing. And the law's not beating up on you saying, you liar. Do we understand what I'm talking about? Remember, A-B conversation. These things are the good things. This is the love, the peace, the joy. 
These are the nine things that are sitting there. The fruit. Uh, how many people have heard this saying? They shall know you by your fruits. Nice. And then they turn around and they say, well, I don't see no fruit. I don't see what they're doing. I don't see no fruit. Just so you know something, people, show me one of those that's visible. There's something that comes out of you, but they're not visible. Stop being a fruit inspector for everybody. Amen. Are we ready to go on? Amen. Amen. Sometimes you got to get beat up in here, you know. I can't be nice all the time. I'll give candy out. There's candy on the other side of the room. After we're done, you get, get candy. Amen. Uh, look down. It says in verse 7. Now watch. He says, why is this? Because the carnal mind is an enmity against God. The carnal mind is in the, the division against God. Uh, did you ever have a division? You're, you're, you're thinking one way, your husband's thinking the other way. And you can't get it together, and you gotta, you're gonna, you have a, what we call a, a contentions. You know what you got? You got enmity right there. You got enmity with your, with your husband, same with God. If you're not thinking with him, guess what you got? You got enmity with him. What's that? You got a division. Hey, look, if you're thinking conspiracy theories in your family, and this one did this one to me, and that one did, just so you know, you're not walking with God. At that moment, what are you doing? You're walking in your own flesh and your own lust and your own thinkings. Your heart, like I told you, your heart is deceitful to you. When people come to me and say, hey, uh, my, uh, I want to uh, wear my heart on the sleeve. You ever hear people say that? Okay? They don't do it. Your heart changes. It's like a roller coaster, man. You're going like this. How, how's your emotions today? I'm not happy. Can I, hey, I, I can tell you what. It's a man real fast, especially these Italian girls. Amen. I can get her real good. I know every button to push, don't I? Amen. What's that? I can get you mad in a minute, can I? Because I know that I've been preaching to these people for a while. I know how to push buttons. Okay? That puts me in enmity. We have a division. At the moment that hits, you get a division. And we got to get rid of those that division. Why? Wow, I want to walk with God. I can't be in enmity with who? With God. Right. I want to be with him. How do you be godly? You like what God likes. And you hate what God hates. Yeah. That's how you be godly. Is that way. Amen. Let's look down. He says, look at verse number, um, verse number 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For, this is the reason, for it is not subject to to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You're not going to do the things of God. Verse 8, so then, they that are in the flesh can do what? Not cannot please God. please God. When you're in your carnal mind, you cannot please God. Okay? How many people think that if, now I'm going to give you some things here. If you were to change the law and there was no abortion, do you think you'd change the country over to God? By no means. They've already tried that. You remember something called prohibition? Right. How to do it? You brought the mob in, people. Look, you can stop. You can tell me I can't drink, but guess what? I will anyway. You can't make laws to make people righteous. Righteous people make righteous laws. Amen. This is what we are dealing with right now in our country, just so you know. Most of you think that, well, we get rid of abortion or we get rid of this. Look, I'm all for doing that, but you must understand you're not going to turn the country back to God by doing these things. You turn people to God, and then they will do righteous things. It's the other way around, not the way you think. Look down. He says, in your flesh you cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh. You're saved. But in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit, that's the Holy Ghost, Spirit of God, dwell in you. How many people are saved here? Amen. This is to you. The Spirit of God dwells in you. Okay? Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is what? None of his. He's trying to get you to understand something. We're all not the children of God, no matter what the Methodists say. You're all not. We are. You got saved, right, Miss Wanda? You're a child of God. But the person out there that's not saved, 
They're not God's children. I don't care how many times that guy up there with the black dress on Sunday morning and the little thing here says, we're all God's children. Okay, get all the child molesters, take them to his house. Right. See how he likes it. We're all not children of God. How did you become a children of God? It tells you right in the Bible, John chapter 1, verse 12, to as many as received him, Jesus Christ, to them, to them people who received him, to them gave he the power to become what? The sons of God. What's that mean? We're not all the family of God. You have to receive him. Uh, let me ask you something. Uh, you got a son? If I when he was young and little, and if I came over, smacked him around, and then turned around and said, can I come in your house, would you let me in? No, same thing. Amen. You understand? I'm not, you wouldn't take me and say, oh, you're my kid too, would you? No, you'd be pretty upset with me. You've got to understand something, people. Those examples are the same in your life. You ain't accepting people that don't like your family. Don't expect God to love, to have these, like all these people that don't accept this family. Right. That Bible says that he says, I'm angry with the wicked daily. That's what I'm angry with them. Mm -hmm. If they're his children, at the very end, do you realize he's going to say, depart from me, you cursed, in everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels? Mm -hmm. How many of you do that to your kids? Right. Not a good example. Why? If you're not saved, there's no love towards you through, uh, unless it's through Jesus Christ. Same thing with you. If I reject your children, you don't love me no more, do you? Right. If you reject God's Son, Jesus Christ, you're not of His. You're none of His. It says it right here. Verse number 9 at the very end. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, if they're not saved, you're not any of His. Verse number 10. And if Christ be in you, if you're saved, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit of uh, is life because of righteousness, okay? Uh, when you die, I should say when your body dies, it's going to drop to the ground. But guess who's still going to be alive? Right. You are, because you're saved. Your body's going down, but where are you going? You're going up. God's child. Amen. We're good? Mm -hmm. Learning a lot? <laughs> learning a lot? Okay, uh, that's the big thing. You'll learn a lot. You're getting fed today. All right, we're going to get a few more, two more, two, three more verses. Verse number um, 11, we'll stop at 12. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus, the Holy Ghost that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. If you're saved, he, ha he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also do what? Quicken your mortal body by his spirit that does what? Dwell in in you okay therefore here's the conclusion of therefore brethren we are debtors not to the flesh the flesh is going to die to the life after the flesh okay what he's saying is you don't owe anything to that old man that just did that that's back there. You don't owe anything to your old person. When you got saved, you're not in debt to that flesh. You're in debt to God. Yeah. He's the one that quickened you. He's the one that loved you enough to take your place. You're in debt to him. You have to understand. You're in debt. Okay? Now, how many people believe that where God is, I should be? Where God is, I should be. Well, let's see where God is. Go to Revelation chapter 1. Look at verse number, chapter 1 in Revelation. Everybody likes the book of Revelation. You should be happy right now. You're going to see something. You ain't going to be dragons or nothing like that. Look at verse, the last verse 20 in chapter 1. It says, The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, God's told Jesus is talking, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Now watch this. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest 
are the seven what? Churches. churches. Okay, they were the church of Ephesus, the church of uh, Sardis. They're different churches. They're physical churches. They're local churches that are their people. They are local churches. They're right churches using God's word. Now look at verse number one in the next chapter. Remember, the seven candlesticks are what? Churches. 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 Okay? Look at verse number one. It says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. Now watch this. That's Jesus. And where is Jesus? Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden what? Candlesticks. Candlesticks of what? Churches. Bam. Where's Jesus? Here. That's right. Amen. You want to be where Jesus is? I just uh, you just learned it. <laughs> God's Amen. not out and God's not here. He's out all over the place. Look, he's everywhere, but let me tell you something, he's working at a local church. Amen. Amen. That's why there was guys like Bob Taylor, there's guys down the line, all these, uh, uh, whether it be him or, or, or Jack Hiles or whatever, getting up and putting it out there and preaching the word of God to you. Guess what? God wanted that. Amen. He wanted that out there. Now, if they don't have the right book, people, please find one that does. Why? It's very important. Ask somebody who went to those. You learning about the Lord today? Amen. Yeah. Amen. You want to know where God is? Where's He at? He's right here. He's right here. Why? His Word. This is the only thing. Scientifically, like this, we we got the pages, we got the binder. Man makes them. They're made in some factories, right? We make these. But did we make the words that are put on these pages? By no means. We're in the business of the Word of God with God. The words are His. They. He's where in heaven. Thy word is settled in heaven, O Lord. Don't look for the originals, Miss Roxanne. You ain't going to find them until you get up there. Don't worry about that stuff. It's up there. God translated it down to you. You have the only device in the whole universe that you can communicate with the Lord and learn about it. That's an incredible science, people. Incredible science. So what we come down to in the conclusion of the matter is this. You got saved. You're schizophrenic. You can go one way or the other. God says you can either live like the new man or you can live like the old man. Both of you are both going to go up in the rapture. You're safe. But guess what? You're going to have problems if you live like the old man. And you don't owe to live like that. He says, forget those things. Walk away from that. Start living like the new man. Don't be a pushover either. Like I got, a, oh, I got arguments with people. I got an argument with her. You know what she did? She didn't push. She pushed back. Why is that? She's not a pushover. She had a right to be like that. Okay? I pushed back. I went. Mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a fuck. Look. That's a lie. <laughs> oh, no. We're still going at it. It's, 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 it's like this, people. You don't know anything to the old man. Okay? You're a new man. Now, you ain't got to get into these big fights. You save your peace. You get out. Don't be a, don't be a, a, a limp noodle in life. You don't have to be a pusher. Okay? But let me tell you something. You walk in Walk in the newness of your life. Don't be one of the people that walks around trying to get people to be right. You just be right. They'll see how you act. That's how they see a fruit. They see how you act, and that will move them. But that doesn't mean you be a pushover. Don't let your kids push you over. Don't let people push on you. Okay? You know what righteousness is. It's tough to do that. It's tough to do that because you got part of that blood. Put up with a lot, but there comes a point. Don't lower your guard to lower the righteousness of the Lord. Don't do it. You know the consequences. Okay? You understand that. You have to understand something, and I deal with it myself. Your kids go off and they go off into the world. They have their choice if they're saved. They go off into the world. And let me tell you something. You 
could have brought them up the best you could. And you did. I know most of you have tried your best. It just, it happens. There's guys in the Bible like Samuel. Remember Samuel? The prophet Samuel, the book of Samuel? Samuel was a good guy. He had rotten kids. You can't, you, you do the best you can, and guess what? They can still turn those ways. Don't appease it. Don't appease it. Be right there. You don't have to hammer them, but be right there. There's some things you think, I got to appease them because I really want them on my side. I'm going to win them. You can't win them with wrong. You've got to win them with right. If it's your house, you don't let them look. Nobody disrespects my work in my house. I put the kids right in their place. Okay? It's just right. Don't appease that stuff just to get them in. And you come back, you'll never have them. You know what you become? Come to smile and stuff. We know that, right? You know what right is, you know what wrong is, but you also don't have to be the evil ogre. Why are you disrespecting me? Just be quiet about it and say, well, I don't need to take that or whatever you have. I don't need to take this. Don't be spineless, but don't be mean. If you need help with it, there's a book, there's prayer. Okay. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for our time here and ask you, Lord, to bless this time. We thank you, Lord God, for being good to us. We thank you, Lord, for talking to us today, getting us uh, back in thy uh, will, Lord Father, by uh, repentance or anything else we have, Lord Father, confessing these things unto thee. Just ask you, if you would, Lord, to bless us today. Bless our hearts today. Let us think on them things. Maybe we've got some things. We've got some sin in our life. We're going back to being the old man. Well, let us be able to say, Lord, I'm sorry. That's me. I'm sorry. I acted like a fool. Father, we love you. Give us peace today. And, and talk to our hearts. And keep our families safe. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.